Hi everybody and welcome back to another edition of From the Rock to the Cloud. Uh, in this series we're talking all things uh, server related, Azure related, and today we're going to talk about something really exciting which is edge computing. Uh, that's a big buzzword in the industry, there's a lots of new terminology around it, lots of stuff happening that kind of, well to be honest, we probably don't even really understand yet. So. As always, um, we've managed to get hold of someone who is actually an expert, not just me babbling on. Uh, we've managed to get uh, the Bartman, uh, Anthony Bartello. He's back again. Uh, obviously, I've got uh, I've got my Bart uh, behind me to represent you. And obviously, uh, as we said before, you're uh, you're originally from uh, the Rock, G Gibraltar. So uh, it couldn't be any nope, more poignant to have you. Malta, sorry, there we are. Yeah, we are. I'm going. I'm going mad, um, and, and and forgetting myself like an idiot as always. This is this is why I can't. This is why I need you to tell me about server information because I can't remember it. Um, so, um, but we're, 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 you know we're going to talk about um, edge computing today, uh, Anthony, and um, just remind everybody though a little bit about you beforehand, uh, just so uh, they can uh, refresh their memories and uh, hopefully remember they're from Malta, not Gibraltar. And um, <laughs> the, um, uh, and then we'll get into it. We'll get into talking about um, edge computing and whatever that holds. So yeah, crack on Anthony, tell us about yourself. All good. So Anthony Bartolo, Senior Cloud Advocate here at Microsoft. Um, I dabble in all things operations, so IT professional based, um, but I'm on the fringe area. So I get, I get to play with all the cool toys um, that IT should be taking into consideration when looking at supporting their organizations, because if this technology is not at your organization yet, it's probably on the um, front of thinking in terms of where your organization is going to go. And in this day and age where we want to ensure that the IT professionals are, or the IT departments are not seen as a cost center, they're seen as an enabler for the organization to move forward. These type of technologies like edge computing, it should be top of mind uh, for them when deploying. Brilliant. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, I think um, we saw, uh, you know, Satya's recent, uh, uh, you know, keynote uh, build, he was talking about sort of the percentages of, you know, spend uh, globally that's being spent on IT going up from 5% to 10%. And then he was talking about like what the other, I think it was 85, 90% are going to be spending their tech, uh, you know, their, their money on, which is tech. And so all of this is kind of interweaving. And I suppose edge computing is a really massive, like it's a big subject. But you know, where 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 do we start talking about that today? You know, what what you know, where would you start? What would you describe edge computing as, Anthony? Well, let's take it let's take it a step back, and we'll what we're going to do is we're going to go through a journey in terms of how we got to edge computing in this day and age. Uh, are you familiar with IoT? Yeah. In, okay. In, so internet, IoT internet, or Internet of Things, Internet of Things, Internet of Things, right? Connecting all devices to capture information. My first project that I actually completed in IoT. Uh, was this. This is a $2 mousetrap connected to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and nice. what it did was when the mousetrap went off, it alerted the pest control company to say, hey, this mousetrap has caught a mouse. That's all it did, right? Nothing more. That was the, that was the information that was being sent back. Um, we then took this scenario and multiplied it by 100. So we built 100 of these traps and deployed these traps inside of a building and then was within the span of 72 hours, understood the travel patterns of mice through that, through that building by how quickly the traps were set off and that information coming in. Imagine now, so that's a hundred traps. Imagine it's a million traps and all this information is being pushed out to the cloud. It's a rudimentary thing in, in regards to, it's just a trigger that the trap is sent off and it sends that signal said so that the circuit is closed. That means it's caught a mouse and it sends the information up. What happens then when you have sending the information about uh, when the mouse is caught, how, you know, if it was dark, if it was light, the temperature, the placement inside of the room or the building of where the trap was set via Wi-Fi, yeah. uh, triangulation, uh, via GPS, all that information. Now you're sending up all this information to the cloud. Is all this information um, um, in important? 100%. Is, does it require to send all this information all at one chunk? Hmm. Possibly not, right? The other aspect to this is the latency of the information coming back and forth. So if I'm sending all this information up to the cloud, awaiting for the computation to come back down, possibility, better placement of traps to catch more mice. If I have to keep on pushing back and forth, there's that latency. And, you know, in a mouse trap scenario, there is no uh, requirement for uh, quickness in terms of response other than cleaning out the traps. You can, you sure. can, you know, wait 
a couple hours to know where a better placement of the trap should be. But in scenarios like, you know, when you're trying to save individuals out at sea, when they've their ship has uh, gone under distress and they're in the water in a life jacket, you know, stuff like that, where it's, you know, minutes count. Um, you can have this scenario where you have to wait for data to come back and forth. Edge computing is that next step. Now that we have these devices that are out there and capturing information in the world, they do the computing on the edge as opposed to pushing all the information up to the cloud. You don't have to do the, you know, the terabytes of data push to the cloud for computation now. You can actually do what, you know, what we see as a cleaning of data, all the raw data being processed at the mm. IoT device to have a deduction of what you're trying to accomplish and then pushing up the results of that calculation up to the cloud for X, whatever X may, may be. Okay. So it's kind of like smart use of data that's out there. And it's kind of like curation of that data so that you're only sending the bits that you need to the cloud, say, for example, for that big processing. But then locally, I specifically need that, um, you know, that, that, that mouse, you know, trap data for timings or whatever, but that's kept there and computed locally. So it's sort of dividing the workloads and then it's making it more efficient and it's saving money as well, because obviously if you were to send all of that data all the time to the cloud and back, that would actually be costing you a lot of money. So there's a cost saving as well as a, a, an efficiency saving as it were. Um, now, something we talked about, um, you know, pre this, and we were talking about like discussing the solar matter. We were talking about there's OT and IOT. Right. Okay. So, um, first of all, what is OT? Right. Because, um, you know, people at home might not have heard of that, but what's the difference between IOT and OT? Um, maybe you could explain so, that for the audience. Let, let's start with IOT first. So IOT internet of things can also be, you know, um, discussed as information of things, right? right? So in the mousetrap scenario, you have that information that's being flown to Azure for compute and capturing that information. Uh, another example based on the mousetrap actually platform was in Toronto, the ice cream trucks are also outfitted with IOT devices for triangulation as to, as to where's the best areas to sell the most ice cream and uh, consume the least amount of gas uh, to run these yeah. trucks, right? Like that's the okay. information that's being pushed up to the cloud. Of things is the whole automation piece. So now you, instead of the information being pushed up to the cloud, it is the, you know, the perfect example that I provide is irrigation systems in farmer's fields, right? You have this scenario where I have a crop of tomatoes and it requires X amount of water. So I program these edge devices to say, hey, I'm placing you in an area that you're providing coverage for tomatoes and the soil uh, moisture has to be X. Uh, and you have, you know, if the temperature is this temperature, how much water should the, should the irrigation system be pushed through uh, the crops to make sure that there's the highest yield for tomatoes, right? So it's more of an automation piece where you have these devices that understand the environmentals around them, specifically catering to what they're, they're uh, guarding, which is the tomatoes, to know how much water and, and um, that type of information. In that scenario there, it's not really pushing information up to the cloud. It is sometimes pushing the results to say, okay, so I've, I've watered this field and now, you know, the, the starting moisture was this and the ending moisture is this. And that's the information that's pushing up to the cloud based on the factors of sun, heat, uh, plants, all that type of information. Uh, but it's mm. a result of automation as opposed to just capturing of information itself. Perfect. So yeah, it, it's, I suppose it's, it's connecting all those little dots and, um, you know, again, just thinking through if we've got like a, a very traditional kind of in you know environment and you know we've got that you know business with their you know their on-prem server but they want to start utilizing for i'm just thinking of like a shop right so a shop suddenly yep. wants to um you've got your traditional till system connected to an on-prem server that's you know doing its daily backup and all that kind of stuff but they kind of want to smarten up and maybe look at footfall traffic so then they put a sensor on the door and then they want to start utilizing maybe some of those uh, Azure features. I suppose that's where things that we've talked about previously, like, um, you know, Azure Arc or you know, Windows Admin Center, those kind of things can then pull those things in and then people can start using those with those combined, you know, bits of technology. Is, is, is that how somebody would approach this? Like, Let, like, let's, I, like, I like your example. So let me take it a step further. Yeah. Um, what you're talking about is information of things in terms of capturing a foot traffic inside of the store. 
Yeah. Um, let's take it to, you know, for the grocery stores, they have uh, freezers in their grocery stores for, for frozen produce. And you have this scenario where each freezer has its own condenser. The condenser itself has to be defrosted twice a day uh, because if you don't, it actually overheats. And it, if the condenser stops working, then the freezer is no longer uh, being kept cold. And that's, and that's a problem, right? So okay. what you're looking at from a grocer's perspective is, so you have to heat up these, these condensers twice a day. There's electricity costs to do that. Uh, in Ontario, uh, the hydro rates fluctuate every five minutes. So understanding, you know, at what time, sometimes it, it's, it's a, there is a surplus of electricity that the Ontario hydro would want you to use, and they'll actually pay you to use that hydro at those instances. That calculation of edge computing does the machine learning exercise to understand when is the best times based on hydro rates to set the condenser to defrost so that it, it, it ensures that, that the condenser doesn't blow up, right? And, it's, and it, it doesn't take out the grossies in that respect. It's that piece that's on the edge that's doing that calculation uh, instead of just waiting for the information. Because remember, that latency piece and that cost piece of sending information back and forth that can become troublesome for a scenario like the condensers because they're crucial to the, the running of those freezers inside of those gross, grocery stores. Um, no. in, in those scenarios there, having it on the edge makes more sense because it makes the grocery store or the freezers intelligent to, to, self, uh, to take care of itself in terms of when the, the condenser needs to be defrosted and what times to ensure that there's low cost to do so. Okay, no, that, that makes sense. And... I think we've got a good picture of what edge computing is, um, and I think that's you know some great examples. But what's IT? You know, what's IT's role in this? Because again, people probably think of IT as again the person that services the server or the guy that fixes your, your broken computer or you know my my blinking mouse isn't working again. Get me a new mouse. That's IT's fault. Like, what, what is what is I, what what is IT's responsibility? I think that's probably even better than than role, right? What's the, what's the responsibility of IT with edge computing? Because obviously, this is going to blow up, right? So, so here's the thing: your your mouse um, story is 100% tr correct. The mouse stops working, they call IT. I've seen organizations the toilet doesn't flush, and they call IT. Right? It's, it's <laughs> IT is being called for everything. The yeah. the thing though with this especially in IoT and edge computing, is it's another device that's capturing information. It's another device doing automation of, of tasks. Let's go back to the freezer example, um, because this was a real example that occurred and was a project that I was on. The initial conversation that occurred with this example was the way that the, the, the solution was initially implemented was in such a way that they did not incorporate IT in this conversation. So the organization had put forth that they had to save X amount of millions every year uh, based on their cost usage. The business decision makers and the developers of this organization went out and got a third party manufacturer to come in and deploy the solution at the organization and didn't tell IT. Um, there was no security parameters put into place based on the agreed upon requirements of that organization based on IT's recommendations. Everything else that had that security capability except for this freezer solution. Okay. A hacker got in, discovered there was no authentication required to gain access to the freezer uh, to set the temperatures, oh. took out $10 million worth of inventory overnight because disabled all the alarms to, to, to you know, notify that the freezers had gone down when the, uh, the general managers of the stores walked in the morning or whoever was opening the stores in the morning, these freezers, freezers were all down and everything was thawed out and had to be thrown out. Right wow. now, yes. <laughs> what happened? Well, this is the thing, right? So what happened yeah. in this scenario? Immediately, immediately when this occurred, IT was called in and said, hey, what happened? And IT's response was, I had no idea this was even implemented at our organization. Nobody had talked to us about this. We saw that yeah. there was something on our network, but when we inquired about it, we were, oh, you're our cost center. You're not our innovation group. We don't need you to be aware of this scenario. We're taking care of this ourselves. They have it in they have it in writing, so they were safeguarded. Needless to say, those that implemented the solution were all let go, uh, and we were brought in to help you know provide a better you know, implementation of the solution because it's a very viable solution. Yeah. But it wasn't yeah. IT wasn't brought in in regards to this, and it caused this major issue. 
any information that is being consumed by our organization, there are security requirements in place that IT professionals in, in collaboration with the business decision makers and the developers at an organization have to set forth security parameters, authentication parameters. There might be ISO standards in terms of where the data can reside, if yeah. it can be in cloud, if it has to stay on-prem. There's all these considerations that have to be architecturally, uh, it is IT's responsibility. These devices, so, capturing information, automating of tasks are also yeah. IT's responsibility. And yeah, and I think I think the key word there is responsibility. Like these, and again, I think, again, probably for the audience, maybe, maybe some of the concerns around this is the fear factor that bringing this new technology and this creating this automation is actually gonna somehow make IT less relevant. And I think it's the opposite. I think it's actually more relevant. There's, there's more layers to it. There's more things happening and there's more things to be responsible for. It's just, it's not necessarily uh, unscrewing the back of a PC and fixing a PC. It's actually, it, you know, it's the management of, of, of the data, it's management of the security, and it's actually that responsibility to make sure that the cost savings that people think they're going to make are actually achievable and they're actually all in the right benefit of the company. So it's, for me, I think it's, is it, it's an elevation of the IT uh, or the role of IT within businesses because it brings them into bigger decision processes outside of just like how does our network work, you know, like how does our how does our website run? Like th those, you know, those are kind of I suppose the IT questions from five to ten years ago. Now it's actually how can the technology we're implementing as a business save us money? Um, so it's actually creating jobs. It's you know, and it's a new skill set for people. I think that's kind of what I'm picking up from what you're saying. Remember the terminology BYOD. I think, I think yeah. it was, you know, a very hot topic, what, eight years ago? Uh, England, bring your own we device, bring your own beer. We, Anthony, we do BYOB, which is bring your own beer, uh, which I, I personally prefer to BYOD, but carry on with BYOD. <laughs> so BYOD back in the day, bring your own device. People were bringing their, you know, their own personal phone, smartphones into the company and say, hey, IT, connect these. And that was the big deal back then is how do I secure them? How do I enable them? Now we don't even hear that terminology anymore because it's now it's yep, connected to the network. All the parameters are set for security capabilities and away we go. We're mm. now in the era of BYOD for IoT and edge computing. Because if you can walk into your local retailer and buy a smart device, all you do is bring it back to your organization. Something as simple as the light bulb with Wi-Fi connectivity to turn on and off and to do an understanding of when it's dark to automatically turn on because I've seen you know smart light bulbs that have edge capabilities um, that could take down an entire network if they get hacked, right? Yeah. Uh, in unsecured paths, unsecured channels. It's not about disabling the ideas and creativities of those that are bringing in ideas into an organization for automation, for better best practices, uh, for save cost savings in terms of day-to-day uh, -day operations. It's for, hey, these devices can leak information. These devices can cause downfall of a, an organization if they get hacked. IT needs to safeguard that, needs to govern that. And that's why the conversation between all of those that participate inside of an organization is so important. Um, the whole BYOD thing happened because people were told, no, you can't connect this device to our network, to our infrastructure, and they found yeah. a way to do it. And that information got on the device and away we went. The same scenario could occur on IoT and edge computing. Should somebody attack an edge device that's doing calculations, computations on whatever information, whatever information if yeah. information and data is the new currency and it goes into the wrong hands, or if somebody sabotages that device that does an automation piece, like the, the crops, if I go in and I, and I change the, just something as simple as I'm going from tomatoes to celery and celery takes less, mm. less watering as an example that may, you know, kill off the tomato crops because it's not, it's not the prop, appropriate level of water. These are the things that IT has to take in consideration from safeguarding uh, and from a from a security perspective, in terms of these deployments of these devices, and I think, and you know, it's it's good that people are starting to think around this sort of stuff. So thanks for explaining that. But I suppose that's one of the reasons why you know, bringing it back to you know Windows Server, that's why we need people to move to that latest version. Um, it's it's not that we're trying to cost them money. What we want to do is give them the upside of the benefits of all these things and they can't do that if you're if you're working on a you know 2003 edition yes it's running that old app 
that, um, you know, I'm just thinking like we're in 2021 and if you're still using 2003 to like run your, that app, like that's quite a few years. Um, but you're not going to be able to like modernize and get the advantage of the new IoT and, uh, you know, edge computing era with that old technology. So that's one of the reasons why, uh, you, you know, we want to help people modernize. But what deployment and security considerations would, you know, IT need to consider in adopting edge computing? Because obviously, you know, modernizing is one, but actually there's more to it, right? What, what, what things do people need to think about? So the biggest thing is what is the organization trying to accomplish, right? In regards to the deployment of these devices, what are they trying to do? Is it an automation piece? Is it a data capture piece? And then who's to gain access to that information, right? Who emits the organization should have access to the raw data, to the, to the result of data, or the calculated data, uh, and where is the data going to reside? right? Is it going to be on premises? Is it going to be in cloud? Can you even send anything to the cloud? Does everything have to stay uh, on premises? Does the utilization of Azure Stack HCI, as an example, uh, be a requirement for that capability of on premises for uh, capturing and calculation of data? But there's you know, so many things that need to be explored. Uh, and that's why the open dialogue is so important, right? Back in the day, IT would just dictate and say, yep, we're going to deploy these servers. I'm going to deploy my, my uh, server 2003 implementation because this is what I feel is, is the spec. And then, you know, the business decision maker would just say, okay, uh, that's great, uh, but I want you to do it at 10% less cost next yeah. year, right? Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the challenge now, right? Because a lot of organizations see that and say, well, okay, if I'm, I'm seen as a cost center and I'm asking to migrate to a new version of server to, to safeguard an IoT solution, you know, how do I, how do I relay the value to the business decision maker that I need to make this investment, which will be over the threshold of the 10% I was supposed to save, right? This is why the conversation is so important with the rest of the organization. If you're seen as a cost center, it's always going to be cut cost, cut cost, cut cost. And that's sometimes to the detriment of the organization that you support. So if you're on that yeah. old 2003 server, you miss out on the functionality of governance and security on solutions like edge computing. In the scenario of being part of the conversation, now IT is not seen as a cost center. They're seen as a participant in the evolution of the organization that they support. And so when the thought is, you know, hey, we need to upgrade to the newest version of server, we need to deploy Azure Stack HCI and Azure Arc for automation of where the data is to be residing and computated. Now you're seen as part of the, the organization's solution to move forward and to be profitable, yeah. in, the, uh, pro profitable in the future then you're not seen as a cost center and then you have a little bit more wiggle room in terms of your say in where the compu the company is going to be moving forward i couldn't i well obviously couldn't have said it better myself but <laughs> and, and anthony so look we've, this is some like again big topics and um you know i think is there some maybe some links or some information that we can share with this post that we can get from you that maybe would give people a little bit of a road to go down to, to, to you know, where to go to find out a bit more about edge computing? Is there any recommendations there a, that you would do? Yeah, there's a plethora of links that I'm going to be sharing so that you'll be able to, to provide a, alongside this podcast. Uh, there are uh, Microsoft Learn modules that are available. There are docs that are available. Uh, we have a lot of blog posts that are available that specifically talk about this. There are step-by-step -step interactions. Microsoft Learn, I love the platform because it's hands-on. Uh, you actually try the technology uh, for free in, in the sandbox uh, that uh, Microsoft Learn provides. doesn't even require an Azure subscription to do it. Um, but there's also step-by-step -step labs if you're doing an on-premises implementation uh, that we'll, that we'll be sharing alongside this, this uh, video. Sweet. Okay. Well, look, thank you for that. And thank you very much for your time today to just give us the tip of the edge. Um, and we're not talking about edge from <laughs> YouTube. We're talking about edge computing. Um, but um, as you know, we've got to that time in the show um, where uh, me and you, the Bartman, uh, we're going to look at um, some memes. Now, as you know, um, I really, uh, you know, I don't know what half of these things mean. So um, <laughs> it's probably going to make me look silly again, as always. Uh, but um, here we go. We're going to go into the meme review now. Um, server meme review. So meme review <laughs> number one. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Let's get the reactions. What if I told you <laughs> ser serverless runs on servers? <laughs> well, I, this I, is I, the thing, right? It's at the end of the day, the cloud is somebody else's server, right? So 
people think of all this data is just floating in the air no no it's a server that microsoft has or a a a huge collection of servers some are under the ocean uh some are in big server farms around the world uh but in essence yes the other day serverless runs on servers uh, it's it's very true i uh and this is but I'm not going to get into the whole conversation because trying to explain to my <laughs> 70 year old dad about the cloud, but that we, we, we did, we're like, we had a family barbecue. We were sitting around the table and he said, what is this cloud? And I just, my, my heart sank. I was just like, oh, we're like, how, how far do I go with this? But basically <laughs> I, the, the conclusion I came up with that is there's lots of computers. They're called servers. They're connected all around the world and they store data. And that is the cloud. And yeah, he didn't get it. So uh yeah it's you know it's somebody else's it's somebody else's server right oh man old old people and servers um they, yeah no <laughs> anyway no, i i love my dad but he's 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 not going to set up a server anytime soon um so yeah the only server that he, he gets is somebody that brings him his, his food in a restaurant so uh, that's right. about as far as it goes. <laughs> right um okay so meme number two here we go Right. Uh, hopefully, the switch to the cloud computing <laughs> is not like this. Well, no, that's that's pretty true. That's from uh, that's Indiana Jones. And uh, right. which one is that? Is that is it the Temple of Doom? I think it is the Temple of Doom, isn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not familiar. I, I've watched the movies. It's been a while, actually. Uh, they're actually coming out with a new one, which is interesting. The the another one. You know, I, yes. There's another. There's another <laughs> Indiana Jones coming out. I, is it nine? I don't know. It's almost as, I, as I, like I don't the series. series my dad. <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting about this meme though is this is what a lot of organizations think cloud is they think that it's going to be a straight swap for your on-premises implementation to cloud computing and it's actually yeah. not and it's actually not even a swap because hybrid you know technologies mean that you have some of your compute on-premises still as a requirement that you have so i you know yeah. it's, it's, I, I find this analogy you know perfect because the whole thing of swapping the idle for the the sandbag because it was the same weight uh it's it's not the it's not the situation it's you're actually providing more value and more uh, enhancement to your compute to your storage to everything else and your access to your information uh so it, in essence the sandbag that you're swapping in is a lot heavier than the idle that's there right now <laughs> uh, and, uh, anthony i love how you've actually you've gone back you've switched the meme from from funny to selling like I'm back in, I'm selling the whole <laughs> solution. Like, like that's it. Like um, screw Harrison Ford and uh, you know in the Temple of Doom. Uh, <laughs> we're just gonna get straight on to selling some more Azure. Like, I love it. Brilliant. <laughs> well, let, let's just do a quick recap for everybody because um, you know I think look, I've actually written down uh, one like my one takeaway really from what you've said. Obviously, the edge computing is big. It's about connection. It's about joining things up, but. For me, the thing that I've taken away from what we've chatted about is it's from turning that IT, or uh, when I say IT, the you know typical IT uh, in a business, from being a cost center to being an innovation center, um, and that will create jobs, it will save money, and it will give businesses the things they need in the future to evolve. Um, and that's really where I think the conversation is around edge computing. Is there anything else that you would add to that? Um, maybe that you know probably a better summary than what I've just wrapped up there. The one thing that a lot of people forget is what does IT mean? It's information technology, mm-hmm. right? And so that information is being captured by these edge computing devices and being processed by the edge, edge computing, uh, computing devices are directly re- a responsibility of us uh, inside of IT. We have to do better and we can't you know, stay along the sidelines and let things at an organization occur without our input or influence. Uh, reason being, because at the end of the day, IT is always going to be looked at as, well, why wasn't this safeguarded? Why wasn't this secured? You not being part of the conversation is as detrimental, uh, if not more so, as if, if you know you were there and, and you provided the wrong solution, right? Being part of the conversation is definitely important. And it, it ensures that you know the value you see in terms of what your contributions are and brings you out of that cost center play to the investment aspect of the organization that you support. Perfect. Well, look, Anthony, thank you so, so much for your time again. 
Uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure we'll talk to you again. I, I have no doubt. Um, so thank you very much for uh, you know everything about uh, edge computing. And I, this is a subject which I think is going to get more detailed and run and run and run. So um, absolutely thank you for your time. Everybody, thank you for watching uh, this episode of uh, From the Rock to the Cloud. Remember, if you've got comments or memes or uh, you want to talk more edge computing, let us know and we'll make sure that we get somebody, an expert, somebody like Anthony, the Bartman, uh, to come and uh, talk about um, talk about these subjects uh, in the depth that you want to hear. So, um, you know, if you've got questions, please, please, please let me, uh, let Anthony know, and we will absolutely do our best to make sure that we can make uh, from the rock to the cloud as relevant for you as possible. Thanks very much for your time today, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Cheers. Bye.